I'm Rob Faludi, Chief Innovator at Digi International. We're really excited because the very first Zigbee network was just launched into space using Digi's XB radios on a sounding rocket similar to the one just behind me. Let's take a look and see how it happened. I'm happy to report we did get data from the wireless sensor modules that were located in the SORX-8 payload. Now the purpose of the SORX payload was to uh, deploy a um, exo-atmospheric parachute which is supposed to slow the re-entry of a payload and lead to its uh, safe recovery. So that's a perfect example where you need wireless because you can't really run wires in a situation like that. Well the wireless sensor ne network was used to validate um, various electronics and hardware for the TechEdSat project. So testing microcontrollers, consumer grade electronics for spaceflight applications uh, to see if we could eventually fly stuff off the International Space Station and maybe one day send it to Mars. What we did was instrument the exo break in terms of pressure and temperature and we instrumented uh, the nose cone of the uh, rocket also with a temperature pressure sensor and then finally we had a third sensor inside the payload enclosure that measured X, Y, and Z acceleration. And so it makes it easy to receive data from really hard to reach places like nose cones and parachutes, places you just can't run wires to. And so it'll help us advance science. It's a very short 10-minute suborbital flight to deploy a very simple low-cost sensor for both flight test as well as operational flight monitoring leading to a safer and a less expensive space flight. What's really great about this project is that it opens up a bunch of new opportunities. Previous to this SORX mission, we didn't have wireless sensor modules. This is actually the very first. So if we wanted to fly any sort of thing, it had to be wired, and if we couldn't wire it, then it couldn't be flown. One of the things we do is we run thermal vacuum tests um, in a bell jar, simulating the rapid ascent. Basically, cool it down, we heat it up, and test it across the temperature extremes. And then finally, we do um, a vibration test, where we uh, simulate on a big shake table the actual forces that the um, sensors would encounter during an actual ascent or space mission. So all three sensors appeared to have functioned. We definitely saw zero pressure and we saw this uh, data from, oh, I would say 120 kilometers up. Yeah, when the first few packets came through, they come down in an email inbox and saw that the wireless sensor data was there, electrifying. Very exciting. Right when everything launched I, and the, we heard the sound and it kind of washed over us, that feeling when you get, when kind of laughter bubbles up from something amazing, yeah, that happened to me. And then I, I still had that grin on my face when we got an Iridium packet because Gabe was just checking his cell phone. And then the laughter bubbled up again. And I kind of just chuckled and smiled to myself. Digi is really proud to have helped NASA put the very first Zigbee radio network in space. And our early results show that great data came back. We're looking forward to helping NASA with more mission-critical projects in the future.